Greetings friends around the world. This is Dr. Bob Teal for the Bible News Prophecy Channel. Have you heard of the amphibian apocalypse? Huh? Are you aware that some have said it's the worst disease ever recorded? Could it affect human beings? What is it? What's it got to do with anything? There's any potential prophetic ramifications? Well, basically this is caused by strains of something called the Batra cocotrium uh, fungus. And what happens is this fungus attacks the skins of amphibians like frogs and salam salamanders. And it eats it away, eats the skin away, and results in heart attacks. So let's read something uh, that was reported by National Geographic about this. Amphibian apocalypse caused by most destructive pathogen ever. For decades, a silent killer has slaughtered frogs and salamanders around the world by eating their skins alive. There's a study that came out from uh, uh, Science in March of 2019. It talked about it, and it says of the species that have been affected by this particular fungus, 90 have gone extinct already. And let me read a quote here. Ketrid fungus is the most destructive pathogen ever described by science. That's a pretty shocking realization. And researchers say that we can't reverse the damage that's already done. Furthermore, many affected frogs live in Central and South America, though outbreaks also occur across Europe, North America, Australia, and Africa. In the 20th century, human activity, such as trade and war, accidentally spread the fungus around the world. So it's pretty bad. Matter of fact, I'd like to read something from The Atlantic. The worst disease ever recorded. The fungus hasn't acted alone. Humans have been its unwitting accomplice. A genetic study led by Matthew Fisher from Imperial College London suggested that this infection had originated somewhere in Asia. From there, one especially virulent and transmittable strain spread around the world in the early 20th century, a time when international trade was booming. Infected animals could be stowed away aboard ships, have been deliberately transported as foods, pets, or pregnancy tests. Either way, the killer strain eventually spread to five other continents. So we're seeing human activity has increased the spread of this particular fungus, and we've had more and more amphibians die, like frogs and salamanders, lots of them. Well, what do they eat? Well, basically, they eat things like insects, uh, such as you know mosquitoes and uh, flies and mites, and things that can cause a lot of different diseases. When I heard about this frog apocalypse, it kind of reminded me of what happened back in the book of Exodus with the frog plague. So I'd like to go to the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 8, uh, and read some verses about that. So I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. So Exodus chapter 8, starting in verse 1. And the Lord spoke to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me. But if you refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all your territory with frogs. So the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into your house, into your bedroom, on your bed, into the house of your servants, on your people, into your ovens, and into your kneading bowls. And the frogs shall come upon you, on your people, and all your servants. So he said, wait a second, you're talking about the destruction of frogs. Well, we'll get to that. Now let's continue to what happened in Exodus, now with verse 5 of chapter 8. Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your hand with your rod over the streams, over the rivers, over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up on the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs on the land of Egypt. So these frogs got there, and it turns out Pharaoh didn't like having these frogs. So let's go now to verse 8. Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go that they may sacrifice the Lord. So we've got this happening. Pharaoh doesn't want this happening. So Moses uh, said, Okay, um, when do you want this done? We'll do it when you want to do it. And we'll get rid of most of the frogs, not all the frogs, pretty much all the frogs that are out, uh, we'll get rid of them. So let's go down to verse 12. Then Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, 
Moses cried out to the Lord concerning the frogs which he brought against Pharaoh. So the Lord did according to the word of Moses, and the frogs died out of the house, out of the courtyards, and out of the fields. And they gathered them together in heaps, and the land stank. But when Pharaoh saw that there was relief, he hardened his heart, and he did not heed them, as the Lord had said. So Pharaoh broke his word. Now the frogs are dead. What happens if the frogs are dead? Well, you might end up with more insects or lice or things like this. Guess what? That's right. Go to Exodus 8, verse 16. So the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your rod and strike the dust of the land, so that we become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And he did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and struck the dust of the earth, and it became lice on man and beast. And all the dust of the land became lice throughout the land of Egypt. You say, okay, but this is a miracle from God. And it's true, it was. But perhaps one of the reasons that God chose something like lice to come after frogs is that frogs could have eaten things such as this. Now, is it possible that the loss of amphibians like frogs and salamanders uh, could possibly lead to anything that could cause diseases to human beings in the 21st century? Well, I would say yes. I think that's a, a biblical possibility. A biblical possibility, because if you go to the book of uh, Matthew, I'd like to read something that Jesus said, cutting in Matthew 24, cutting into verse 7. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Now, I don't believe that the only pestilences are going to come as a result of having less amphibians. But that could be a factor. I also suspect that human engineered or synthetic viruses or pestilences or whatever are going to be a factor. Now, Jesus also mentioned famines when he talked about pestilences. As it turns out, one thing that human beings have been doing is ended up killing bees. Bees are actually responsible for pollinization of about a third of the crops worldwide, and roughly around 80% of those in the United States. And basically, the use of uh, neonicotinoid uh, pesticides, or actually more technically herbicides, seems to be a major factor causing reduction of the bee population. Well, if you've got less bees, you can have potential for less food. Less frogs, potential for more insects, and things such as that. Now, as it says in Genesis 2.15, human beings are supposed to uh, tend the earth and keep it. But instead, in various ways, human beings have been destroying the earth. Jesus is going to have to intervene. Over in the book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 18, it talks about when Jesus comes. So let me read this particular verse. The nations are angry, and your wrath has come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that you should reward your servants, the prophets and the saints, and those who fear your name, small and great, and, you sh and should destroy those who destroy the earth. So yes, Jesus is going to come and destroy those who destroy the earth. And we, human beings, directly and indirectly, have been doing various things to destroy the earth. Now, before Jesus comes, we're going to have more pestilences. If you go to the sixth book of the book of Revelation, I'd like to read some things from there, starting in verse uh, 7. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on him was Death and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. Beasts of the earth is a reference to pestilences. Now, interestingly, back in a sermon, June 19, 1982, the old pastor general of the old Worldwide Church of God warned that the destruction of of insect-eating creatures, like birds, could allow for an exponential growth of insects. You say, well, how could that have anything to do with this? Well, you've got less amphibians. Birds eat amphibians, too. And so this also affect the bird population. But the idea that we could have an exponential growth in insects is certainly consistent with biblical prophecies regarding pestilences in the beasts of the field. 
Now, of course, a lot of people don't believe any of this stuff, and they don't think any of this stuff really, really matters. But I'd like to read something uh, that uh, Apostle Peter was inspired to, to write. It says, Beloved, I now write to you the second epistle, in both of which I stir you up your pure minds by way of reminder, and that you might be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, Knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lust, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. And that's what people think. They think things are just going along like it always has. But we have 90 less amphibian species because of this one fungus. Things are changing. Of course, people think things take too long. If you continue in Peter, he talks about people didn't really believe the flood was going to happen. But let's go down to verse 8. But beloved, do not forget this one thing. With the Lord, one day is a thousand years, a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as many count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. So we know it's going to happen, and people are not going to be prepared for it. Let's go down to verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you ought to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for the hastening and coming the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for the new heavens and new earth in which righteousness dwells. So yes, we know things are going to get worse. We shouldn't think that they're going to stay like they have been. Peter warned that. He said, but after all this, you know, the kingdom of God is going to be established, and that will be great. Now, a lot of people don't want to believe prophecies. You know, the Apostle Paul in 1 Thessalonians 5.20 said, or wrote, do not despise prophecies. So if you're not supposed to despise, despise prophecies, what should you do? Well, you should heed what Jesus said. Let's go to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 21. I'll read a few verses there, starting verse 34. Jesus said, But take heed yourself, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly. Yeah, people are going to say, everything has just been like it was, and it's not that big a deal. Don't pay attention to any of this stuff. And that's how people are going to think. Peter warned about this. Jesus is warning about it. Now we'll go on to verse 35. For it becomes a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. We need to watch and pray. Change your life so you can be counted worthy to escape the things that are going to come. Because that... God has promises along those lines as well. Do not despise prophecies. The world is not going to continue as it is. Uh, pestilence or, pestilences are going to come. Destruction of bees, the loss of, of various species, including the loss of amphibians, all can play a role in the prophecies that are going to come to pass. Believe what the Word of God says. Watch and pray always that you may be kind of worthy to escape those things that are going to come to pass and stand before the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, our Savior. This is Dr. Bob Teal for the Bible News Prophecy Channel.